So as you guys know, we I've been working on a battery design. Um, this is the my latest battery kit, and I already shown you how to assemble it and everything like that. And I came up with a new design. I know, don't fight with me, but let me just show you the prototype. This is my first prototype on my last design and hopefully this is going to be my last design but check it out it is based on a boss bar it got screws on it and these are the pcbs that have fuses on it and it's it resembled my first design. Some of you might remember that we had a boss bar on the top and the bottom, and we got connections on it. But my biggest issue with this design was the amount of size that you were going to use versus the typical grid that you find on this type of setup. So by doing this, you were losing about half an inch on the middle so that will make your packs much much bigger and for some of you you know space is a problem so i kept redesigning i kept iterating and i came out with this say hello to my little friend this is a massive 70 cells in parallel that are connected or pre-connected in parallel every single cell it's fused on each side. You have a much, much less amount of screws and bolts. And also, it is based on my first design. We are, instead of using a spring clip or something, or spring, we are using the PCB as a compression bar. We already ran some tests with it. And it turns out that PCBs are strong enough for you to bend it and they will keep enough force on them so, because they want to go back to a original position. And also the pieces are small enough and affordable enough that in case that you have a fail system because it loses the shape of it or lost some strength, you could just change it. Right now we're building a really massive battery. It's a 14S70P. And today we're going to put together my last model and we're going to assemble the whole module so you get an idea how to put together one of these. So, when you're working with this battery, you get the grids. These are the grids that we are making, which all the cells are going to be there. But you're also going to need some type of standoffs or spacers. These spacers are specifically made for this battery uh, kit. But as you can see, you got a nut inside, right there. And this is where the screw is going to be. Hopefully you get to see it. Once you have that, you are going to need boss bars. These are the boss bars that are made here. I make them myself. Of course, you're going to need some screws. Last but not least, Fuses. These are my fuses. They are specifically designed for this setup. These are rated for 2 amps con uh, constant use and they pop around 7 to 10 amps. And we also use some type of metal connection between the fuses and the cells. That's basically the whole kit right there. But let me show you how we put together one of these. So what you do is you get your spacer, right? And you take nuts that comes with the kit. And you can just place it in the slot. Just like that. And you just pop it in, just like that. That's how easy it is. The whole idea is to make this up front so it's going to be easier for you to assemble the battery kit later on. Just like that. 
So once you have every single standoff or spacer done, all you have to do is get your grid, just like that, As you can see, we have a road full of standoffs. You got a mason one, then you got another one, one empty, another one, and so forth. The next part is to take the other part of the grid and just place it on top and make sure that everything fits together. The next part is to pre-assemble the fuses from one side with the bus bar. So once I'm getting ready to pre-assemble the fuses, I use a, a very tiny screwdriver with a flat head and I insert this into the holes to pre-align the nuts that are inside the, the, the standoffs. So I know what you might be saying right now. That's the, fir the first road and I already see a bunch of screws. That's gonna get tiresome. If you have a large battery, there are going to be a lot of screws, but I will urge you to buy one of these. Now, this is not a sponsored video for this guys, but this is the cheapest one I found on Home Depot. And trust me, they are going to become your best friend. Not only because it is an electric screwdriver, but also it makes the whole assembly so much faster and so much better. So this part's done. Now we're gonna flip it over and start assembly the cells. One of the trickiest and maybe the most confusing part of the whole assembly, it's gonna be this one. And also it's going to allow me to introduce you the most important tool you're going to need other than the screwdriver. It's a pair of tweezers. I think that's how you guys call it. The reason is because this is how we are going to place the contacts that's going to allow the compression for each cell. The way I do it, I take a piece of aluminum, which is gonna be this one, and I just place it right in the contact, just like that. And then I take the battery or the cell. In my case, I'm gonna start facing the positive down, and I just put it on top, just like that. And that's it. That's all you have to do. You put a piece of aluminum as a contact, then you place your cell down. That's all you have to do, at least for this part. Once you're done with that, you're ready to assemble the top part. So again, this is how I normally assemble this. I take a piece of aluminum, place it on the contact, and I'm actually starting from this half over here. And I just place them as fast as I can, humanly can. And just like that, then I take the cells, just put it like that. Don't worry if it moves a little bit, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You can actually rearrange it later, and that's it. So I'm gonna continue, then I'm gonna come back and show you how I assemble the top part, okay? So now that everything is done, every single cell is where you're supposed to, we're going to continue the assembly by placing the fuses on top of this side and do the whole side. Put the fuses, put the bus bar, and then place the, the other piece of contact in between the fuse and the cell. So now we need to add the contacts that go between the cell and the fuse. So I take a piece of aluminum and I lift the PCB, I press it, then I take another one, I go behind, place it, you're done. 
You can take another one, place it, lift it, and you're done. Once you're done with one row, you can go ahead and screw down the screws and then move to the next one. So I'm going to finish up this pack. And the last part is going to be assembly the last, the main bus part, the one that's going to tie everything together. So I was putting together this one, as you can see. This one kind of bite into the nut and it's not allowing me to continue my work. Now how do I fix this? And I'm gonna show you how to do that. First, I'm going to remove this whole section right here, and then I'm gonna remove this uh, screw. So hopefully you guys remember that I mentioned that you want to know to which direction your standoffs are facing, which is, it's going to give you a faster way to get in and fix the problem than get out. In my case, the open face of my standoff is actually facing this direction, which means that if I remove this battery, this cell right here, I'm gonna get access directly to the nut. Come on, there you go. And then what you do is you take your flathead screwdriver and you kind of pinch the nut in between the nut and the plastic. For this, I'm going to use my other screwdriver and that's it. That's how I fix this. So one of the things that you could try to do, it's you could actually try and screw it back in and see if, it's, if, if it works. As you can see, it's working. Now that I know that's fixed, I wanna make sure that my contact is centered so I could put back in the cell. So as you can see, my whole battery is pretty much assembled. Now, all I have to do is uh, make sure that every single cell has a contact to it. The way I do it, one of the probes or the terminals goes straight to the bus bar. And the other one, what I try to do is actually touch the cell. If you don't touch the cell and you by mistake touch the aluminum, of course it's gonna make a sound. It's gonna let you know it has a contact, but that's not the idea. The whole idea is to actually see if the cell has a contact. So I'm gonna check everything, then flip it and also check the positive side. So as you saw, this particular cell was not making any good contact. Some of the troubleshooting that I noticed is that sometimes the battery, the whole cell, it's a little bit too tight on the space. And what happened is that it is basically being held down either by the, the bottom part or the top part, not allowing the cell to, to move freely. So basically you can either try to push that down or go underneath and try to push it back up. And as you can see now, it has contact. So you're done with the battery. We went around, make sure that every single contact it's, you know, every single cell has a contact, that everything is okay. Now comes the main bus bar or the bus bar that are going to allow you to use the whole battery as a full module. But you don't have to use it this way. You can actually use this the way you want it. For this particular design, we're gonna use the module as just one large pad. And for that, we are going to use a bus bar. There are going to be placed two of them like that on each side. You can use more than one if you want to, but for this particular build, this is more than enough. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add the two strips to the positive and then to the negative. So there you go, guys. Uh, this is my new design. And I know I said, the last one was my last one, but I think this is the one that I, it's gonna be the last one because it, it kind of gathers everything that I wanted. It's a compact size. It's something that we can actually build upon it. We can start creating all the stuff around this whole design idea. 
of course there's going to be some testing because we need to test the 14s before we ship it out to the client so hopefully that's going to be on the next video the other videos that we're going to make is putting it together the this module but using other type of cells and if you like to purchase this one we're going to extend the black friday cyber monday uh, special event and we are going to be having this on the website diybatterystore.com on the next video we need to put this to the test and hopefully i'm going to be able to record that because this battery needs to be in a new home soon i hope you guys like it uh, leave a comment let me know what you guys think and go to the website diybatterystore.com so you can purchase your own version and we're going to have different sizes starting from 10 batteries in parallel all the way up to uh, this one which is the biggest one which is 70p hope you guys like it and i catch you in the next one god bless you see you bye